I'm in the master bedroom, custom oak, box beams, the build, install, and price. It's all next on Home Pro Hero. This is the first video in a series of several coming from a master better. The first step is I need to jazz up the roof. I currently already have a timber up there that I did about five years ago. I plan on adding a total of eight beams, four full-size beams, and then four half beams. On the half beams, I'm just trying to save a little money. I don't need to show wood, that won't be seen. I gotta be on the money. I'm adding the fireplace, and those beams are gonna be on both sides of it. So I gotta make sure these are accurately installed. It might be a little salty too. I'm using three quarter inch oak one by material. In my opinion, this is somewhat difficult. I'll let you on the end how difficult it really was. Never done anything like this before. Looking forward to the project. Let's get to work. Okay, first thing we need to do is get the measurement of the room. I got this tool from Hupar. Quick little measurement tool. Works out great when you're by yourself. Shoot the beam to the opposite side of the wall and you push the button. 202.9, 202.9. 202.9, pretty accurate. I would say it's 202.9, right? It also gives you angles. This roof comes in about 18.1. Hey, if you need a tool like this, I'll put a link in the description. I got a detailed drawing on SketchUp of how I want these beams to look. I knew my measurement was about 203. Each inside beam will be at 64 inches from each wall. So let's go build the box beams. Okay, so the uh, project got real pricey when I had to go to 10 foot boards, right? I'm gonna waste about 18 inches per board but I'll reuse the stuff somewhere along the line. To get all the cuts for the beams, I need two saws. I need a table saw, I got the blade at a 45 degree angle, and I got the chop saw. Right now, we gotta cut a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of 45 degree miters. Each full beam will have a one by six on each side and a one by four in the very bottom. The half box beams will have one one by six and one one by four. So I'm basically cutting out the extra one by six by hugging the wall and the table saw batteries are shot. I think the table saw met its match. 60 feet of ripping uh, on oak, which is pretty hard on a saw. Anyways, uh, we'll go ahead and put one together real quick. I have the one by four right here and the two one by sixes. What we'll do is we'll put tape all the way down, we'll flip it over and then we'll glue it and fold it, kind of like a book. All we're gonna do is make the miters touch each other for the most part. And then boom, all right. Fold it over gently and then unfold it. Okay, let's go ahead and glue it. A lot of glue here. We'll use 18 gauge um, nails, inch and a quarter. It's a lot of work making these, but uh, save a lot of money in the end, really. I mean, you can't afford to do full oak beams. All right, got them all glued. Let's go ahead and put together. Hopefully, please. Okay. Well, that went up pretty easy. Um, where did that one? Okay, I am gonna tack nail all the way down. I'm telling you right now, I'm surprised the miters look as good as they do. So far, we'll see what happens when I flip it over. I'll show you a trick here in a minute. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the tape off. Feel pretty good about it for the most part. So I got a wet towel here I've been using. What I do is I get that glue off. You can see a crack right there a little bit. Not a problem. Smoothing that edge out with a screwdriver, it will collapse the two together and uh, does a really good job of making it look like one piece. I'm not gonna worry too much about the ends. Let's see if I get that crap filled away. Boom, look, pretty much gone. When that glue dries up, it's gonna be hard as a rock. So you gotta do it now. This is just kind of round over that and make that gap go away. I've got a long day ahead of me. That's one. I still got three more full ones plus four more half ones. So let me go ahead and knock out the others real quick and I'll come back when I got them all done, I hope. See how bad this is gonna be. Just don't wanna get splinters. This is splinter heaven right here. I think I might have underestimated this job. Uh, pretty intimidating, pretty tough. I'm not sure if this is a beginner DIY thing or not. Uh, it's pushing me to my limit. So we'll see at the end. Next day, batteries are all charged up. Let's get to work. Just FYI, uh, the one by six material, I got that measurement at four and a half inches. And then the one by four material, I've got that at uh, two and five eighths. So two and five eighths from here and four and a half from here. 
It's probably more convenient if I did them all at once, but I was trying to assemble up batteries, recharge type things. All right, let's go ahead and assemble these uh, partial uh, beams now. So you can see real quick, and what I've learned is the table saw is not perfect, but what you can do is make up for it after you get it all assembled by uh, sanding it, make sure it's rounded off, and uh, clean it up. Man, I haven't even noticed one anyways. I got one beam up without you. I wanted to make sure I could get it up, install it, and look good before I actually show you how I'm gonna do it, and it worked like a champ. Let me show you in great detail how I got that first beam up and the best way going forward. I cut a couple four by two blocks for the cleats at the top and the bottom. So you wanna make these blocks slightly smaller than the beam themselves. So you can see I got some slop in there. Very important, that way it's not too tight. Gonna pre-drill these real quick because they are smaller blocks. The first thing I wanna do is mark where my cleat's gonna go. Is I need that cleat at 63 and a quarter. So I'll put the outside of my beam right at 64 inches. I minus the three quarters of an inch for the outside of the beam. Keep in mind, these cleats are gonna fit inside the beam. Same thing on the beam, 63 and a quarter. Hupar gave me a brand new laser to try out on this project. All the bells and whistles. So here's the Hupar SO4 4D laser. That means it shoots four different lines. One, two, three, and then there's one over here too, four. They've got a lot of makes and models. This is the cream of the crop, and it's still offered at a great price. Two-year warranty, super durable, waterproof, and super accurate to within a 32nd of an inch. Not only do they have a great laser, but they sell a phenomenal stand that no one else even sells. Let's set the line on the ceiling. That way I can get these cleats perfectly accurate. And we know we have a sill plate at the top. We get really good bite. Okay, you gotta make sure that this block's all the way at the top. And that's where you're gonna use that laser line to help you. I bought these little devices from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. They work great. They're used for stairway treads. I marked one with a B and one with a T. I put them on an eight foot one by two stick that I bought at Menards that I'm gonna use for a later project. But this will give me the angle and the length perfect at every beam location. Can't beat that. Let me show you how it works. Because I'm only one person, all I wanna do is make sure the bottom bracket is flat on the wall, just like that. And then I'll just simply adjust the top to the beam. That should give us a close enough angle to make it look good. The template's actually sitting on the beam the exact way the template was on the ceiling, right? Don't get backwards here, think this over. Look at it 10 times before you cut it because you only get one shot at this. So I got everything lined up. I use clamp just to kind of keep it in place. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a pen. I'm gonna mark the angle. Everything's lined up perfectly. Boom. So I wanna make sure I label the top right now so I don't forget. Oh, wish me luck. I'm sick to my stomach right now. Got about $100 on line. There's our beam. Good God. As you can see now, I have my laser on each block. Now, let me show you the trick. I'm just gonna push D. Give me another vertical line. Look what just happened. That will help me line my cleat in the drywall perfectly. So there's probably a high chance that there's not a stud up there. I don't wanna go in the attic and block. So I'm gonna use these right here. Got them at Lowe's to actually anchor them into the drywall. First thing we wanna do is pre-drill. Just wanna make sure the carriage bolt will slide through the hole. Just like that. Since we know the laser's on the money, we're gonna simply mark it with a Sharpie where I need to put this block at. I can move the laser out of the way now since I have the black marks. I know exactly where to put this at. Okay, all three holes are pre-drilled. This is a paddle half inch. Ooh, I hate drilling holes in the ceiling. It's always scary. All we gotta do is bend them and push them in the hole. There's one, there's two, three. And all we gotta do is tighten up the block, making sure we're on the right lines. Yeah, it's definitely gonna help. Let's go get the beam, see if she fits. Please fit. All right, top in first, bottom in last. Here's the top, here's the bottom. Make a slug at the top. Okay, good. Fits really good, pretty tight too. I think it looks great. 
Let's go with it. This one's done. Take it down, stain it, polyurethane it, and uh, let it dry. We'll put it up here permanently. I'm gonna knock the other two out real quick. Uh, then I'll show you the ends, how much easier those are, hopefully. Hey, that's my glove. What do you expect? Uh, I went ahead and did one partial already. Uh, this is the first time I've ever done this kind of stuff before, so I wanted to make sure I did one uh, so I could tell you exactly what I did and what worked for me. So let me show you real quick. I got my three blocks in there. Bottom nice and flush. Boom. Adjust the top. Boom. Here's the bottom. All it's going to do is just sit on those blocks. I'll put a nail into the bottom and then also the sides. Put the top in first and bring the bottom up. Boom. Let me knock out these next two and uh, I'll bring you back uh, when we're going to stain these. Hopefully tonight still. I don't know. It's getting late. Okay, I didn't bring you along for the finish. I've done that many a times on my channel. Same traditional brown I always use on my channel. I'll put the secret formula in the description down below in case you like the brown too. Look how great this looks. The beams turned out phenomenal. Oaks kind of come back a little bit, especially if you put the good modern day stain on it. You don't want to go with the old school Bob Evans looking stain. The golden hue look stuff. This nice subtle brown. It's almost got like a hint of purple and be honest with you, but uh, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Can't wait to see what it looks like on the ceiling. Or well, at least I hope I can't wait. <laughs> but I'm ready to put the beams up. Everything finished out perfect. I'm ready to rock. So I'm using my work boot to help me out with this. Hopefully I get these things up without killing myself. Remember, this is marked for this location right here. Okay. Well, that works perfect. Good start. Doesn't have to hold much weight. Okay. Pretty good right there. Okay, let's see if we can push it in place now. Push it up. Man, it looks good down there. I think we're good everywhere. And if you wanna know something about me, I'm a great starter. And I start to fizzle off towards the end, mainly because I already got my eyes on another project. And I just want this one to be over with because the idea is already exhausted in my mind. So I'm gonna put two screws in each block. One on the front, one on the bottom. Just kind of sinking them just a little bit. I'll touch them up in a minute. Perfect. Wow. Whew. That's how simple the partial beams are. Six screws. I feel pretty safe with that. Let's knock out those other three partials real quick, and then we'll get to the full-size box beams. Should be real interesting to see how these all tie in. So far, so good. How'd I do? Custom, DIY, look at that. Nice and tight. Here goes nothing, wish me luck. Hope it fits. Yes, sir. Same exact process. I'm sticking those long screws in there. I'll probably offset them so this side I'll be at one location, the other one I'll be a little bit lower on it. It's not gonna go overboard for too many in there. Especially on the wife's side. If, if I'm dead. It's because of him. Hey, I'm 100% sure it's not coming down anytime soon. The whole house will have to come down for that to come down. That's how easy it is. The full beams are almost just as easy as the partials, other than they're a little bit more heavier. I gotta get them in that middle cleat, which is kind of a snug fit. So if you're doing this yourself, those cleats, make sure those things are at least an eighth or quarter inch more narrow than the inside of that beam, because it's a tight fit. And when you got your hands above your head on a ladder, it's always a good thing to make sure it easily slides in. Okay, remember those screw holes I was telling you about? Brown caulk. Should camouflage them enough where no one's gonna notice. Yeah, hey, square a little bit on it. Plug it on top. When it dries, it should be pretty brown and nobody will know the difference. Boom. Woo, glad that one's done. I'm ready for the next one. Hey, super challenging project. Probably a seven or eight on a 10 scale. But she's done and I love it. So what'd this cost me? About 900 bucks. Not the cheapest project in the world. But in the master bedroom, I think it's a wise investment. You haven't seen nothing yet. Wait until you see what I do next. 
With all that said, if you like this video, take a look at this video. You'll like it too. If not, take care and I'll see you next time.